What's going on, y'all? It's Rev, and welcome back to another Dauntless video. We're gonna get right back into it. We're doing Heralds of the Storm today. I just logged in. I got my tea. I'm chilling. I'm chilling right now. But we're gonna do Heralds of the Storm today. Uh, what is this? Episode eight, I believe. Let's pick it up. And uh, this is a big turning point for the uh, for the main quest line in Dauntless. We unlocked the Hellion weapons, Pangar weapons, and um, I don't believe we get anything for the Drask, but it will allow us to make those two sets of armor. Hellion is some of the best gear in the game, and we will definitely be crafting it. Now, I'm not quite sure how I want to do this particular quest, because there are definitely specific behemoths that I want to do with particular weapons but i'm gonna play a little bit more catch up i think today and we'll probably just be playing the sword um we're gonna be going over the strategy for uh hellion and pangar and they have roughly the same game plan but uh, you know they have different attacks they're much larger in size than one another and yeah we'll just talk a little bit more about those fights as we get to them um what are we doing uh what i'm gonna be doing first I literally just logged in. We're gonna claim our daily login bundle. We are going to check our bounties because we have something done here. Burning for you, draw your sword and slay behemoths using ax or war pike. Strapped another one, we'll do slay with the sword. Simple enough. I need a ice sword. So we're going to go with the Boreas Sword if we can. We didn't get... So I guess that's something I'll need to do. What is this? What is that piece? Boreas Hide. I need two Boreas Hide. So we'll uh, quickly go beat up a Boreas. That will be our first game plan. Oh, we have normal Boreas now. I'm going to just do a lesser Boreas if I can. Yes, I can. So let's queue that up. Um, Yeah. I've done a lot of escalation rate lately. This is, uh, on my main account, I finally finished the entire grind. You guys can expect, uh, some more escalation content here in the near future. Uh, I don't really, I'm not really interested in the loose cell, but, um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm kind of drawing to a close on the current content, which means I can focus more on creating beginner guides again and more like weapon guides i want to do i want to kind of get back to basics with my content that's kind of where where i'm at with everything uh i'm gonna still be uploading escalation guides but uh right now the main focus is putting more time into the the beginner experience because this is all brand new to me it's uh it's good to get brushed up on things like this uh as what i i consider myself you know a, a teacher of dauntless you know i try to ease the experience for uh newer players and so getting acquainted with the newest content or the uh the newest i guess rendition of the content it, it it's important to me and um giving you know maybe not I, I'm not going to say I'm 100% right all the time, but I want good information to be out there. And I want, uh, you know, a, I want all of that information to be all in one place. And, you know, we have things like the wiki and, and stuff, but, you know, I like Dauntless enough that I can do all that kind of stuff. And I feel like I'm knowledgeable enough that I can put content like that out there. So we're just uh, chopping up this Boreas really fast. It's going to be a really fast kill. There are certain states in the game, like when Boreas is entering uh, the Ars Armor mode, aka Aether mode, that you can't break parts or get a stagger. And it feels really inconsistent. Uh, it's not one of my favorite things in Dauntless, but it is a thing that does exist and things that you need to keep in mind for um, higher, higher levels of play. You know, that doesn't really affect everyone. But... As you start getting into the uh, the nitty gritty of Daunt Dauntless, you start seeing uh, things like that. Like, hey, I'm not going to be able to get a break here or um, what have you. Should be almost dead. 
I don't even think I've used my overdrive. I'm just kind of face rolling at this point. Nice. Slay eight behemoths with the sword. See, I don't mind doing things like this and going back to farm a little bit of extra gear because it doesn't take a lot of time. And also, it gives me mastery, which means more cells, more, more kind of everything. Get a little bit of cells, a little bit of loot. And so the first thing that we're going to do is craft that ice sword. Hopefully we got enough orbs to get it to plus four, plus five, wherever it's going to land. I'm hoping plus five because I really want to fight Hellion. I'm going to fight Hellion with the Boreas sword. And then I'm going to fight Pangar with the Hellion sword. And it's going to be a grand old time. Probably going to need some more flame orbs too somewhere along the way. But I'm hoping to finish Heralds of the Storm in this episode. That's the goal. We'll see if we do it. So we got the plus four. That's okay. Um, it's a shame. I need two more frost orbs. Hmm. I think it's worth it to just send it on. On this, I'm gonna put plus two overpower there. Overpower is a very important cell for this fight. I am going to do tough just in case I do get hit. I will have that plus fifteen percent extra healing from the cell just having plus one gives you that big chunk of healing cold light slay pangar with a neutral weapon we could probably do that um so we unlocked adhesive hilts and i'm gonna i'm gonna equip it now adhesive hilt is the first mod you receive when you get to a certain sword mastery it becomes or, and it reads, become unstaggerable while in special. And so that means when I'm using Valiant Overdrive, the thing that allows me to dash and shoot slicers out of the sword, I'm going to be unable to get knocked down. Now, this could be a good thing or a bad thing because not every attack knocks you down, but it might make you stumble, and that stumble still has iframes. And uh, that's important because that means you don't you don't do get those iframes anymore so it's possible to just get totally uh shotgunned by some projectiles later on in the game and and it's not always useful is what i'm trying to say it's not always a good thing but early on it probably helps some people uh feel like they're contributing i guess um, that, that sounds bad, but I, I mean it in a way that's like you, you're able to stay standing, which means you're still able to deal damage. So if you're still learning how to dodge, it still lets you kind of like play the game, which is, which is nice for, for a new player. It, it sucks to feel like you're just getting totally beat up. And so, uh, let's see, we have four forever, rage hunter, energize, adrenaline, whole bunch of stuff that we... At some point, we need to kind of clean up the build, but we'll do that once we beat Hellion, honestly. I think we're probably going to uh, craft a lot of the armor here first, and then we'll do the weapons. So we might fight Hellion a couple times in this video. We'll see how long the kills take. And um, yeah, so let's get right into it. I'm probably going to be looking for a little bit of consumables. I'm probably going to be using more consumables. Hellion is... Uh, Hellion can deal some damage for sure. It's a, it's a heavy hitter, and so Hellion is kind of like the younger brother of Pangar. I'm going to take a detour here. If you ever arrive on this map, always go left, even if the behemoth is to the right. Go left. I'm going to run over here, grab these uh, Sky Bloom. There's more Sky Broom. Bloom, uh, broom. Sky Broom. Um, across the way. Hit that jump pad. Some Wrath War here and more Sky Bloom right there. Sky Bloom is very useful for a lot of the, um, I don't want, I was going to say mandatory, but it's not, it is not mandatory in the slightest, but it, it is used in a lot of the, uh, general recipes that are very good. So Sky Bloom, uh, we're going to just kind of quickly detour back to where Hellion is. I'm going to get this Dash Leaf because Dash Leaf is also good. And so what can we say about Hellion? Hellion is a little bit more crafty. It's faster than Pangar and uh, has less range than Pangar. Now, that being said, the strategy here is when you break the legs, you get a really big damage window. And so the idea, the best place to be is right on the outside of the legs here. That was a really mistimed roll. 
you never want to be underneath the behemoth almost ever and i think that's no matter what behemoth you're fighting but that goes like tenfold for pangar and and hellion thought i rolled that properly but so you can see i'm underneath the behemoth i'm gonna roll out and go for this leg i just i just focus a leg you know even if it falls over i'll just wait i'm gonna pop my lantern get some attack speed here and i got a frost proc which is gonna slow it down a little bit you can see that the attacks that it has it's is, is available to it when you're on its flank is very predictable like this 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 move is highly telegraphed you can you can learn the timing of it i'm kind of in a bad spot and the frost proc kind of is throwing off my timing which is something that happens but i'm gonna use a healing potion break the leg it falls over so I'm going to take this time to actually go for the tail. The tail is slightly elevated off the ground, and you're going to need tails for the weapons. I'm almost positive. I should have checked what we needed, but I have a feeling we're going to get a majority of the breaks here. So I uh, I didn't bother. So it's back up, and you can see it's almost staggered. So I'm going to go for the head. I see the stars. I'm back at the tail. Probably cut the tail here. Yep. And so... The Aether Form, which is when Hellion's kind of light lit on fire, you can hit those scales and you get these Molten Orbs. This is the same thing that the Hellion Armor actually gives you. It's called a Cell Perk called Molten. And when you deal damage uh, on a timer, a set of orbs are going to fall out for you to grab. These orbs give you fire immunity, they give you attack speed, and they give you move speed. It's a very nice perk, very strong perk. for You get a lot of value for that particular perk doesn't really matter what weapon you use molten is very good for every weapon so you can see i'm just kind of wailing on the on the legs it falls over i go for it you know i cut the tail already so i'm going for the head even even still even this deep into the game we are constantly going for unbroken parts so i'm trying to like squeeze in there get those little t-rex arms but they're pretty hard to hit and hellion's almost dead so we'll see what happens once we are able to squeeze in here and uh it's probably gonna die i'm probably not gonna be able to get this arm and so that's what i'm saying uh we'll see what happens because if i get this arm i'll be very surprised it is almost broken though i can tell because it has two scars on its arm as opposed to one and i was unlucky and could not get it but what we did do is kill it before it could run and we're using a plus four sword the boreas sword is very very strong highly recommended for any sword main and the funny thing is the same thing is it goes for pangar pangar uses its tail a little bit more to uh you know sweep you know do long sweeping hits at um at slayers but for the most part, as long as you're going for the legs, you're going to be all right. Uh, so we beat Hellion for the first time. We got that mastery tick. We are going to see what we can craft. We broke everything but the arms. So we missed out on two breaks, but we got four of them. We got two legs, one tail, and one, uh, one face break. So we'll see what that nets us. What does it mean? What does it all mean? In mod, we trust. Equip a new mod we already did that and we get 500 rams which doesn't really do anything for us crafting inferno's razor requires head of the hellion and we'll see if we can craft any armor so we need face breaks my beard is extra itchy today I am digging on this. So that's a brow plate. We can do the chest piece, which will be nice. We can do... I say we just hunt some Hellion, honestly. We can do the boots, but the boots don't really... They don't, they don't really do anything for me. I'd really like to get the Karabak boots for my sword. This is kind of like the set that I want to go for, is the Hellion helm chest gloves and the care back boots so i'll probably circle back at some point and do that but right now i'm gonna focus on 
on the Hellion. We'll probably just farm a little bit of Hellion today, actually, now that I'm... That, that is the wiser choice, uh, I believe. Now, if you have access to Hellion, you definitely want to take the time to craft its stuff, because it's some of the best in the game. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to keep it rolling. Maybe I'll... Uh, I think I'd probably have to kill more Boreas to do more uh, Frost weapons. Let's see if I have any crafted. I don't. That's a shame. Maybe Scrave? No, I need more Scrave stuff as well. We'll just take this episode to, to farm Hellion then. We'll just do some sword farming and talk a little bit more. Y'all can see how I uh, how I operate while I'm while I'm fighting Hellion. And uh yeah, I'll probably just cut right here. Now we got a different map this time, and which way I go on this map is what I'll typically do is I'll check to see if the behemoth is over there on off in the far distance on the right. And if it's not, I'll actually circle back and I'll hug the left. You get a better vantage point on where the behemoth might be. And there's also a ton of Wrathwort on the left side of this map. Wrathwort is my go-to uh, consumable. I think it has the highest priority. It is used in the most damage tonics. And I like extra damage. Now, I can see Hellion over there. I'm going to detour and jump down here and just grab this Wrathwort. And then I'll jump across the chasm there. Grab this Aether Wisp, get more. We shall hopefully make this jump. Yep, no problem. And, um, you know, it's business as usual. What we're going to be going for is the leg. We're going to go for a break. We're going to go for the tail. We're going to break the tail. And once it breaks, we'll, uh, we'll get the other leg and then we'll go for the head. Pretty straightforward fight once you know what you're looking for. This body slam attack, you just roll to the side. Never stay underneath, roll to one side, roll to the other side on the tail sweeps. On the tail slam, you roll to the side. And, and I mean, for the most part, on any behemoth, I would say mm, maybe 75% of the time, you're just like, you can solve the issue by just rolling to the side. And this takes practice. Uh, how I actually practice dodging was doing exactly this. You know, I go into the game, I play solo because when when I'm playing solo, the mistakes are on me. You know, it's all within my ability uh, to control. And the behemoth is a little bit more. Uh, it's more of a one on one. So I knocked it over. I'm going for the head this time just because it's right here. I should probably use my lantern. And I got the KO before I got the break. And this is good that I broke the head because I'm going to come around here and break the leg. And now I'm going to go for the tail. Pop my overdrive. I have a little bit of stamina. I wish I had a little bit more, but I'm going to be spamming these slicers. When I'm in overdrive and I have stamina, I'm looking to just spam my slicers. Uh, that is the wrong leg. You dingus. And when it's enraging, it does that little stomp. You can honestly just back away from it at that point. I like to get a little risky and sneak in some cheeky damage hits, but you don't need to do that. Play safe, play smart. That leg clipped me, so that's unfortunate. Took a little bit of damage. We'll just pop a health pot, keep ourselves healthy. Cool, going for the leg still. Getting a lot of raw, raw damage parts. You can see I'm not getting uh, the typical yellow damage now we're in the same situation again we're just gonna try and sneak in hits on the arms we have a stagger coming up so i'm gonna actually greed for that there we go that means i can go for i'm trying to use my vertical attacks to get in here a little bit more but the hitbox is really hard to deal with so this is unfortunate probably not gonna be able to break this but it is probably almost dead yep all right and so the reason that i'm dealing so much damage and able to kill it this quickly is when hellion falls over that is proccing 
uh, overpower, I also have that plus three Rage Hunter. So I have plus four overpower and I have plus three Rage Hunter. So if it goes in Rage after it stomps and then I break a leg, I have about, I believe it's 70, I'll have like 70%, maybe, maybe a little bit less uh, damage going at the time. And uh, it's allowing me to deal a lot of extra damage. It's a lot of compounding damaging uh, factors. My overdrive is generating extra damage. My overpower, my rage hunter, adrenaline, uh, and all the other damage perks that I have. It'd be going even faster if I had one more upgrade in this sword. But I do not, which is a shame. But we got some more loot. We can probably make the weapon... Very tempting. Very, very tempting. And this weapon actually has overpower on it as well. Hmm. Let's do it. Some of the best weapons in the game. It's not going to get... So, this episode we'll farm some Hellion, and then maybe next time we'll farm uh, Flame Patrols. See if we can craft any armor, because I definitely want to slip into something a little bit more warm. Let's see. Rage Hunter is there. I like that. Crap the helmets, one of the best helmets in the game. Definitely running short on flame orbs. When we do our flame patrols, we'll actually run different weapons, I, I would wager. Let's do one more pursuit on a Hellion. Then we'll do uh we'll do Pangar and then we'll do Drass, because Drass is gonna be really easy. They're already kind of prepared for Drass, like I could knock I could knock it out really quickly. But uh, maybe we'll do Pangar and Drass next episode after farming a little bit of Hellion. This is, this is, I highly recommend if you're, if you're watching this video, following along, take the time to learn the Hellion fight because you're going to want to upgrade that armor. Everybody, everybody, no matter what weapon, Hellion armor is so good. So good. And once we have the complete set, you'll kind of see how, how we're taking shape. Our character is going to finally uh, take shape. For sure. See what map we get this time. Hellion can spawn on a few of the arid maps and uh, also some of the foresty areas. I actually like these maps the most because they're the most wide open. This map in particular, I believe this map is uh, Burning Rose, if memory serves. The maps used to have uh, island names and I don't know if they display them anymore, but once upon a time, they did. There was actually a different type of patrol called Expedition, where it was it was for... Um, it was like patrolling, but you got, instead of extra bonus orbs, you got bonus consumable items, so you don't need to gra uh, you don't need to gather as much. Which was kind of nice, uh, but they kind of combined everything all into one as patrols. A little bit of <laughs> dauntless history or lore, I suppose. I've been playing this game for a very long time. I've been playing since the uh, Founders Alpha, which the only people that have been playing longer than me are people that have been either playing Dauntless in in the early development, like at at Phoenix Labs's um, you know uh, office offices, or they were in the Tech Alpha, which was like an invite only sort of thing, and then after that was Founders Alpha which allowed uh you know you pay you know the the people that like founded the game it's kind of like kickstarter right you you found a game and then and then fund it or support it and then they give you a, a code to enter the alpha and try out the game which is really cool so the moment i learned i was on like a huge kick for monster Hunter. i was playing like 3u 4u and at that point I was madly in love with the game genre, the act, the stylish, like I was, I was playing DMC, I was playing Ninja Gaiden, fighting games, and that's where a lot of my gaming background is, is, um, fighting games. They're probably where my, my, most of my gaming passion lies these days. I love, uh, I love spectating a and playing. I would love to compete. I'm, I'm probably a little old now. <laughs> I feel I'm a little old, but. You know, I'll probably still in, in my lifetime. I'd like to do a couple tournaments for fighting games. I think it'd be fun. I think I could do it too. 
but uh anyway i've been playing for a very long time it's uh, this once this summer comes up uh i will be playing dauntless off and on for about three years i'm trying to sneak in this leg and i just can't seem to grab it there we go got him right before it burrowed that's uh that's very lucky i might be able to get this arm i'm landing a lot of hits it has two scars on it which is good I'm going to just try and throw in slicers at it and hope that the slicers break it because the slicers penetrate. So we actually got an orb this time, which is an, or an, uh, not an orb, uh, an, an arm. Let's see if we can get all the breaks. I doubt it. It's going to die any moment now. I'm doing something I shouldn't be doing, which is being underneath it. And then it just kind of like kicks me in the face, right? I'm underneath it again because I'm greeting for this arm. There we go. Another dead hellion. That's three down. Three down, and we actually broke an arm for once. Nice. Again, Boreas weapon's very good against... Uh, Boreas sword in particular. Uh, good against fire behemoths. Now, we get a little bit of bonus loot for never dying, so that's something worth noting. If you're taking a lot of damage, you know, try and try and prevent going down. Use all, use all your resources, because you're going to get some bonus bonus armor items. Or I guess I should say armor and weapons. Maybe we'll go chain blades again for Pangar. Hmm. I think chain blades are probably the best matchup for Pangar. So maybe we'll consider crafting those. If you're a chain blade user, the Hellion chain blades are the best chain blades in the game, hands down. So if you're liking those, uh, definitely craft them. They should be a high priority for you. Um, same goes for War Pike. Same goes for Sword. Um, same for Aether Strikers. Honestly everybody should have their their hellion weapons but the chain blades 100 percent um hmm i like molten i can craft both of these you can see how we're racking up a lot of breaks more so than than it takes to craft them and so we're gonna actually need a lot of orbs here and so i believe they're they're good to go we just need some orbs that's pretty clean talk a little bit more about you know how long i've been playing dauntless and stuff in the in future episodes but i think that's going to do it for this episode we've been going for quite a bit and we killed uh some hellions hopefully that helps you uh devise a strategy with your current weapon uh, maybe we'll do more hellion in the future uh and we'll do scorchstone help hellion which is the dire version which we'll be encountering here in the future i don't know when because i don't know how the story arc goes but We'll do some other other weapons with Scorchstone Hellion. It's not really fair because I'm playing my main weapon, but I'm just trying to catch up. I feel like I'm behind everybody, but you know, let me know where you're at in the story if you're watching this uh, and following along. That, that would help me out a lot, actually. So thank you guys very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next episode. If you like this video, leave a like. If you want to support the channel, subscribe and um, use creator code RevyRed in the Dauntless in-game store. I stream on Twitch. All that stuff will be in the description. And um, yeah, thanks again for watching. I will see you on the Shattered Isles.